as much information right now that's um, being um, said about the uh, covenant, not the covenant, I'm sorry, a treaty, peace treaty being uh, presented from the Trump administration to Israel. Um, the, the problem is, of course, the Palestinians aren't going to go along with that under any conditions, but something's going to be presented. Because I find that really interesting. That's like the groundworks. Let's also remember in Scripture when we talk about a covenant that is going to be uh, basically, it, it it's going to be not enforced, but it's going to be made presentable to the Israeli people. This covenant is going to be made presentable. Well, in order for this covenant to be made presentable, we're going to have to have a serious attitude adjustment for Hamas, Fatah, and Hezbollah, because they aren't getting along at all. Now, remember, they all have to agree. Not only are they not getting along, but they're warring amongst them themselves. I've always said, keep your eye on Israel. The surrounding wars and everything that's taking place are definitely there. And I see signs of that being something in the future, forming for in the future. And so what I'm saying there is I'm thinking the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. So that seven year period right in the middle towards that point when Satan comes in and he actually desecrates the temple. That's really the real harsh part of this tribulation period. The first three and a half years for the Israeli people, it's rest and peace. They're, they're at a position to where they're going to actually be allowed to take it easy. Now, what I just got done saying was, is that somehow a covenant's going to be enforced and somehow Israel's going to be allowed to have this rest of three and a half years. How in the world is that gonna happen? How about a war? I said an attitude adjustment. How about Psalms 83? All surrounding nations around Israel. No, that has not happened yet because it's made it very clear in Psalms 83 that their enemies are eliminated. They are killed. They're gone. They don't exist anymore. That didn't happen. They're still there. So make no doubt about it. The three and a half year reference, uh, I can use a couple of different places in Scripture because I want you to understand Israel has to go into a time of rest. It's important. It's important for Ezekiel 38 to work. It has to happen. So in Ezekiel 38, it talks about when this war is going to take place. And it says, which they all, um, talking about Israel, but it is brought forth out of the nations, this war against them, and they shall dwell safely amongst them. Okay, Ezekiel 38, 8, read that. Shall be safely amongst them. Uh, Ezekiel 38, 11. And thou shalt say, I will go up, to the land of unwalled villages, I will go to them that are rest at rest, that dwell safely. All of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. Well, now that's the Ezekiel War. If it's coming up against Israel and they're without walls, they're without bars, without gates, they're at rest. Okay, so that tells us something. Now, up in the northern part of Israel... There's a great commotion going on between Lebanon and Israel because they're building a wall up there. They're building a wall. They're not taking one down. So that's a long ways away from happening yet. So there's a couple indications of three and a half years, and there's more coming, okay? Revelation 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In there, that was a great sign that was given to us. Scott Clark brought this out. The one thing that he did is he put a tremendous amount of emphasis at that time, which happened to be September 23rd, when this great sign was showing up in the sky. He drew upon it being related to the Feasts of Trumpets. Feast of Trumpets in the Jewish tradition and understanding is basically the end of the year, the start of a new one. It's kind of like our New Year celebration. That's the Feast of Trumpets. He drew to an understanding. By the way, he has a new video out. He's doing it again, but he's just saying a year later. September, it'll be September 9th now. But, but what's, what he was saying was, was that he drew an understanding that it's possible that the rapture could happen then. It didn't. Uh, Re Revelation 12, 1 through 9. This is a foretold sign. This is of great importance, is what it says. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to deliver. 
And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads, ten horns, and the seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had had a place prepared of God, that they should feed her for three thousand two hundred and three score days. Three and a half years, folks. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought that war, the dragon, and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. The great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast onto the earth. This is a picture that is told that is an important sign for us to understand. What this picture just got done saying was that at the time when this child is to be taken up, which is the church, we see that. The woman is Israel. It goes into rest for three and a half years. The dragon then, Satan, is at war. The war is for three and a half years. Satan loses, comes back down to earth again. That's that period of rest that Israel has to have. After that rest, Satan comes back again. He takes over command, takes the power back from his son of perdition. Now, he was the one that brought that three and a half years worth of rest and that understanding of the covenant to Israel, which turns out to be a bad deal for Israel. And Satan breaks it. Why? Satan knows his time is up. It's finished for him. This is when, it's called in the Bible, Jacob's trouble. This is when, literally, this is one of those times when we can say it will be like when hell breaks loose. This is going to be the time of the trumps, of the seals being broken and opened, the bulls of wrath being poured out. This is where it's very possible that Ezekiel 38 is going to start because Ezekiel 38 is told, which I read here just a minute ago, that they will come upon Israel when they're sitting safely. They think they're dwelling safely and their walls, bars, and gates are lowered. They're down. The three and a half years allows Israel to lower those walls, bars, and gates. Let's everyone think they believe Israel's resting and taking it easy now. And here Satan comes back again after this Revelation 12 sign that was shown, great sign. And he comes down, he takes, walks into the, to the temple, he keeps them from sacrificing there. He ruins it for them. Then he starts at, against other nations that are opposing him, and he starts also going against Israel. This is where Israel is told at that moment to run and hide. Now, so some of you understand right at that point there's going to be what's good to, 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 to appears to be like another resurrection. There will be many at that point that are going to be delivered, that are going to be taken up. The believers, okay, another group is going to go up. That's a whole other story. I, I won't get into that right now. These truly are exciting times. These are times that are monumental. These are times that are prophetic. And they're to be understood by us. They, it's not left for us to wonder why. If Scott Clark did anything, he showed us Revelation 12 and made us understand. Now, he's pinned a lot of his understanding to thinking that that's when the rapture can happen. On a festival a feast day, an appointed time by God. Is that possible? Sure, of course it is. Of course it is. But we're told it will be at a time when we least expect it. Wouldn't we expect it to be on a feast day? Am I 
as a non-Jew believer in our Lord Jesus Christ, am I to be involved in these feasts? Is that something I should do? Because I'm part of the church now. I'm of the New Age. I'm of the New Testament. Not by age, but by belief. So, am I going to put a lot of weight on the festival days? Because if I did, doesn't it really sound like Pentecost would be more like it? Doesn't it sound like maybe the, the, the feast of the wheat, of the raising of the wheat? How about the feast of the, uh, 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 the leavened bread now that has been cooked that the priests hold up? There's two of them, one for the head and one for the body. Wouldn't that be a better sign? That's, those are the feasts of uh, Pentecost, feasts of uh, the, the grain and the wheat. Wouldn't that make more sense that it would happen then, that it would be in September, the Feast of the Trumpets? I'm only throwing that out there. I'm not saying I know. I'm just saying how it is that I see these things. But, but take and know now that what is literally taking place before our eyes, when Trump or any news article or anybody from Trump administration or anybody anywhere with it being the UN, anytime they say treaty, they say a compromise, they say peace amongst Israel and the Palestinians. I want you to go over to Daniel 9.27, I want you to put your finger on where it says the covenant right there, and I want you to touch that screen or TV or whatever it is you're reading, because that's Bible scripture, that's prophecy right there, being placed right before us. If that doesn't tell you something, now remember the church goes before this peace treaty is enforced. So, are we in exciting times? Is this something to behold? It's like I said, I started this, I don't know, 25 years ago, I started coming to the Bible. I was brought to the Bible, you know. And then, and then it started unfolding, slow but sure. Uh, I began to understand Bill Solace when he brought out Psalms 83 War. I began to understand Scott Clark when he brought out Revelation 12, 1 and 2. Okay, I, I don't want to go on for a real long time. Keep your eyes focused on Israel, folks, because what's happening there right now is those f factions of warring factions around Israel are fighting against their own selves. That's going to have to be reconciled, Psalms 83. There's going to have to be a reason for that three and a half years to come into place, that three and a half years of rest to come into place, Psalms 83. Folks, pay a lot of attention to that. Get into some detail and try to understand it better. Because it really does look as if that's about what's ready to take place. If that is right, if we can do that, given to us by God, our Father, so we can understand the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, remember? If we've got that, and we can see this, don't be surprised if you sense and feel something that's about ready to happen. Because I believe, Ross, now, that's what I feel and sense. And by the way, I've noticed in the comments, I can't tell you how many people say the same thing. You know, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I really feel something in my heart. I feel something with inside of me. I know something's going to happen. That's what I'm going on. And I'm sticking with the Revelation 12, 1 and 2, which I started out with. We are in that season. That season being, as Jesus described it, folks, spring. When the branches, the end of the branch is about ready to turn soft. and It'll start to turn green. We know what season it is. Jesus said, but you can't tell? Well, of course I can. You gave it to me to know, Father. And thank you. Thank you for that. Amen. Folks, do what you want. Play it out on any, play, any way you want. We see the setup of those horns being told in Revelation. We see those, that, that we can see powers that are, that are developing, but further on down the road. But can we see what's taking place right in front of us right now? Can we? I say yes, we can. And I've given a scripture to go by for us to be able to, to figure it out. Um, you new scribers out there, wow. <laughs> a lot of people have just recently joined. Um, that's amazing. It really is to me. Um, thank you, all of you, every single one of you. Um, again, your comments are really appreciated. That, that Again, that's how I learn from you. And tell me what you think. 
Um, you know, some of you old timers out there, I haven't seen you <laughs> old timers. This, this whole site isn't even a year old. Anyway, uh, just at least say hi or something. I want to know that you're still out there, huh? Okay. <laughs> Guys, thank you again for, you know, stopping in. God bless you all.